Strong governance will save the cooperative movement. Let me say this again. Strong governance will save the cooperative movement. One of the things you want to make sure you do as a director is you connect your mission to the money. One of the things that you can assume is that your car operator, your CEO, cares about the mission and the vision of the institution. They just might be a banker that just happened to find themselves in the credit union space. And all that warm and fuzzy stuff, ugh, all they're worried about is the bottom line. And so the only way to influence an individual, in my opinion and in my experience, to care about your mission is through your strategic planning process is to create mission specific goals in addition to those financial goals. And so in your planning process, okay, we're going to grow by this amount. We're going to earn this amount. Great. But with those funds, what are some of the mission specific things that we're going to do? And the only way to ensure that is to compensate from a bonus standpoint, management to care about it. Let me just say y'all something. You got um, a couple of credit union people. Uh, let me give you an example. You got uh, true believers, meaning folks that bleed credit unions in the cooperative movement. They love what y'all about. They love, they love who you are. They love how you help people out. Sometimes though, those individuals aren't the exact best operators, okay? So let's put true believers to the side. Then you got some bankers and credit union clothes. Let me say it again, you got some bankers and credit union clothes. And I have a bank consulting firm, so I don't begrudge bankers. I just think that bankers have had choices. Meaning, let me just give an example. Say you was a, um, a young, young senior manager that had a thought about becoming a CEO at 30 years old. He had two choices. You could have said, you know what? I'm going to stay in this bank and I'm going to become a bank CEO. All right. And over the years, I'm going to take my check and I'm going to reinvest my own money back into this particular institution. So and then over the next 30 years, when I'm 65, guess who's going to be the majority shareholder? Me. You could have made that choice. But if you decided to stay in the cooperative movement, there's absolutely no opportunity for you to have complete control of this institution, either explicitly or de facto. And so I don't feel sorry for managers who I have to tell this institution does not belong to you. It belongs to the people because you had a choice to make 20, 30 years ago. And as such, board members and the only way to get managers to care about the things that you care about and eliminate the agency problem don't think i'm not folks i, I want to do a whole series called i'm not making this ish up not making this stuff up okay meaning look up go on google and type in the agency problem it's a corporate finance term whereby boards eliminate management's bias toward protecting themselves against the goals of the organ overall organization. And the way you eliminate that is that you compensate them for achieving the goals that you want to happen. They, get, they got some credit union folks on here, some board members who are um, maybe uncomfortable with large bonuses from managers. Let me just say this. This is a different industry than maybe you may have retired from or in now. If you're a teacher, uh, um, a nurse, and you may not have ever gotten a bonus. And for that, I think that is a tragedy and I'm sorry. But in this industry, in order to get the mission done of your organization and to reduce the talent risk, you bonuses and fair compensation for strong managers has to be on the table. Because, let me just tell y'all something. There's always credit unions looking for new CEOs who have good numbers. And if you aren't creating a fence through your compensation around your management team, they're gonna look around and say, I could do the same thing I'm doing for y'all for them 
and make more money. And so regardless of how you feel about it personally, you have to put that to the side and think about how do you always have the best people running your car. Being a credit union board member can be both a beautiful and enriching experience, or it can be one of the biggest headaches you've ever had in your life. No matter what you do for a living or what walk of life you come from, you can be an effective and contributing board member. Whether or not you're a new board member just trying to learn the ropes, a more experienced board member trying to take your organization to the next level, or a chair just trying to get your fellow board members to get along, I'm gonna help you reach your goals. Over the last 15 years, I've helped credit unions, both small and large, survive, thrive, and support their communities in different economic environments. My approach to this course is premised in meeting you where you are, leaving out all the fluff, and having a boatload of fun while we do it. In this course, we're gonna address the fundamentals, but we'll also do a deep dive into the most commonly asked questions by directors. From strategic planning to CEO compensation, to making sure that you have a good understanding of all those ratios that are in your board packet, this course covers it all. My name's Anson Cooley, and this is the Comprehensive Credit Union Board course.